In terms of layer two security, there's uh, one main feature and then a few other things. Um, one thing that was in the blueprint, uh, it listed was Mac filtering. So I'll just mention that real briefly, although the odds that you'd probably see it, I think are a little lower, but um, it's about the only Mac filtering you'd really do is uh, if you wanted to prevent a specific Mac address from being able to communicate on a switch, um, you can create a static Mac address entry and then just say drop it. Normally in the Mac tables, you're, you're assigning Mac addresses to interfaces. Uh, here we're just saying Mac address, uh, you're not allowed to talk. So the command is going to be Mac address table and it's going to be a static entry. And so you, they, sh they would have to give you the Mac address. So let's pretend that that's our Mac address. Uh, it's going to be on a per VLAN basis. So they would have to say the VLAN. So let's say it's on VLAN 10. And then you can just say drop. And now, at least on this switch, any time this MAC address attempts to communicate on VLAN 10, it's just going to drop. So um, that's about the only MAC filtering you should really make yourself aware of. And then you would, you would need to do this on every single switch uh, that's, I guess, in the communications path. So if they tell you, specific, like, HQ, do it on all the switches in the HQ or what have you. Just follow along with what they're prompting you to do. Uh, but the main layer two security feature that you should be aware of is uh, port security. So the purpose of port security is to, well, it's a couple fold. One is to restrict the number of MAC addresses that are allowed on a port. So you could say one MAC address, you could say five MAC addresses, 10, whatever they tell you. And you can also, um, within that number of MAC addresses, you can say uh, reserve only specific MAC addresses are allowed to talk in this port. So you might say that only one MAC address is allowed to, the, to use this port, and it has to be this MAC address. So the only thing that that would work on that port is that one device, and that's it. Um, you could also have you know, multiple MAC addresses with only some of them reserved. So you could say five MAC addresses are allowed on this port, one of them being reserved for this MAC address or these two MAC addresses. So. The configurations are pretty straightforward. This will only work on an access port and it has to be a static access port. It won't work if it's a dynamic auto or dynamic desirable that happens to be an access port. So the configuration, if you go into an interface and we'll just go on to, uh, it's actually it's configured as a trunk. So let's, let's just fix this. So let's make this as an access port. Switch port, mode access. Okay. So now it's an access port uh, to enable port security. It's going to be a switch port, port security command. So if you do just this plain command all by itself, it will enable it with the default settings of one MAC address. And then there's also an action item that goes along with this. So if we, you know, if we limit it to one and all of a sudden a second MAC address comes along or once the, we exhaust our limit of MAC addresses and then the next thing tries to uh, use the port, we can do a few things. So if we do, oops, sorry, switch port, port security, there's a violation action. So the default violation action is to shut it down. So that actually error disables the port. So anything on the port that was working, no longer working once you, you know, violate your number of MAC addresses. That's a pretty harsh thing, you know, uh, especially if you're using VOIP, you know, someone plugs in a, a little switch, so they're starting to put in a bunch of devices um, and the, the violation method is shut down. Everything drops, including that phone. So you might want to be a little more uh, graceful about it and you could use the protect and restrict. And what that does is, so any MAC addresses that were working continue to work and then any new MAC addresses that go beyond your limit just those just get dropped, but everything else that was up stays up. Um, and the only difference between protect and restrict is restrict will actually send a log, and let me just make sure I always have that right, yep. So restrict actually sends a syslog alert about it, protect just silently drops it. So uh, the one way I've sort of remembered how to do it is Restrict actually has an S for syslog somewhere embedded in the name. That's, that's as good as I have so far in trying to remember the difference. But protect and restrict, leave the port up um, and drop the additional max. Shutdown just takes everyone out with it.
So the default is one MAC address and shut down as the violation method. So switch port port security is always the first command you need to enable it. Um, if they have things pre-configured for you, you might see a whole bunch of switch port port security commands with extra stuff behind it. But if you don't have the generic switch port port security, it never actually gets enabled on the port. So with switch port port security, so we can do a maximum. So defaults one, let's say that we're gonna allow five for a violation. Sorry. Switch port, port security, violation. So shutdown's the default. Um, we'll just try saying protect. And then there's just a couple. Whoop. Sorry about that. Switch port security. Uh, aging, so it will age out entries that it doesn't see for a while. Um, so you can have static aging for configured addresses. Otherwise, normally it's just either um, we would set an aging time for, you know, say 10 minutes. And we can do a type of aging. So either absolute, the second I see it, I start counting down if I do absolute or otherwise inactivity. Once I stop hearing from it, then I start the timer. Otherwise, once it sends another packet, the timer starts over. So those are the two different types of timers that you can do. So absolute's the default. We'll go ahead and do inactivity. And then by default, everything it's just learning addresses dynamically which is fine, but if you actually want to specifically say this MAC address should be allowed on this port, we can do a, a static entry, so I could do MAC address. And we can either just say the MAC address, oh. and you could specifically say what VLAN, if it was, um, I don't know why that is, because it's not like it can be a trunk. Uh, or you can dynamically learn a MAC address uh, with the sticky command, but then preserve that MAC address across reboots. So say you don't want to go through the effort of determining what MAC address is assigned to every single port. You could just kind of set a starting point where like, okay, whatever's plugged in right now, I'm going to learn that, and then that's what's going to be allowed on the port uh, for, you know, in perpetuity. So if you say sticky, what you do now is if you do a show the running config in the port. Anything learned in a sticky uh, will get an actual line of code, and that's how it can actually remember it across reboots. And so we see this, just the plain sticky command, and then we also see, all right, here's a MAC address that it actually learned here. Uh, so, so VLAN is for access, or voice VLAN, sorry. Um, so it learned what MAC address was already there, and then as long as I save my configs, it'll save that across reboots. And now this MAC address will always be reserved on the switch port. And once you have a MAC address defined, either from a static entry like this one or through the sticky method, um, that, that always takes a spot. So right now I would actually have two of my five MAC addresses allowed reserved, so I can only add three more on top of this, even if you know, this fictitious one isn't even around, it's still reserving one of those uh, spots. So if you want to verify it, show, sorry, port security interface FA01. So you want to make sure it's enabled and that's with just the plain switch port port security command. We see that it's secure up, which means it's up and functioning. We have our violation mode, which is protect. By default, it's uh, shut down. We have our aging timer and inactivity. So all those things that we configured. Here we can see the max addresses. So we have two total. Um, technically, only one's actually active, but since we defined two in the config, there's two there. So one configured, one sticky. And then we don't have any violations at this moment. So to go along with, uh, with port security, you know, the, the shutdown violation mode actually uh, error disables the port. So if you want, um, you can use that error disable recovery. 
to automatically you know, bring the port back up after a certain amount of time. And we already showed you that with the uh, VPDU guard. The cause for port secure, it's not blatantly obvious, it's, it's actually P secure violation. It never calls out port security in its full name. So if they wanted you to automatically bring the port back up after a certain amount of time, uh, the air disable recovery option with the P secure violation cause. And then to verify it, show air disable recovery. And then there's the P secure violation. So that's port security. Um, they, if you see it in the lab, um, you might get to just configure it from scratch and great if you do that. Or they might have things configured, partially configured for you. The easiest way for them to uh, mess you up is if you're looking at the config and you're seeing, oh, look at all this port security stuff, but they might just omit the plain port security command. And since you see a whole bunch of port security commands in there, you think it's enabled, but it's not. So just make sure that there's always that just plain switch port port security command in there. Otherwise, you won't get your points. 